Stats. Stats. Oh my stats! Data and stats come in all shapes and sizes. They're freaking everywhere. Our school has statistics and data. The intertubes have statistics, and sports has statistics and data. I think this one is the number of viewers in a specific year, but they forgot to mention that. Our team, Sam Kane, me, Megan Riswold, Nick DeLapp, and Gabe Wells. It's not even like close to Halloween and there's Christmas trees. Aim to inform the masses about stats and data. But first, what are stats? Statistics come in two main forms. The first is descriptive statistics, which are statistics that describe something. Here's about a thousand wonderful examples. Here, pump three million gallons of fuel, clean 47,000 seats, swept 400 aisles, and showed 175 little boys and girls to the restroom. We served 50,000 meals, 56,000 soft drinks, and cleaned up 250 spills. We checked 260,000 bags, flew 170,000 people, and said thank you about half a million times. And you know what? It's still not enough. Thank you. U.S. Air, America's most frequent flyer. The second branch of stats is inferential statistics, which are based on hypothesis or population samples. In this example of inferential statistics for an 1892 health product, they use population sample. Though since there was no way of fact-checking in old ads, they have a habit of lying to you. But don't think ads have stopped lying to you now. Even in this 21st century world, there are several types of lying data. Take this magazine ad, for example. It says the product is designed to help you. Well, I'm sure it's designed to, but it never claims to actually work. This is a fantastic example of implied connections, ads that make loose claims, not promises. Or how about this? National average mortgage rates. What do they mean by average? Mean, median, mode? Thanks to ambiguous averages, we'll never know. Now here's my favorite. Detached statistics like this one simply forget to make comparisons at all. Happier than what? But whether data lies to you or not, it still comes in two main ways. Quantitative variables, like on this very sciency graph here, are numbered measurements. And qualitative variables are when variables are grouped, usually non-numerically. Like in this graph showing sales at a furniture store business. And this one too. But there's something wrong with this graph. Alright, the first bar goes to $1.50 and is 0.5 centimeters long. That means 1 centimeter is equal to $3. And since the bar 2 above that says $7.75, when divided by 3, it should measure up to about 2.6 centimeters if scaling is correct. So... 3.8 centimeters. Not even close. We call this a misleading graph due to improper scaling. Well, we've seen the stats, graphs, and liars. I think there's only one thing left. What are data? There are four main types of data. The first is nominal level data, which is made of specific groups that cannot overlap or be ranked, such as zip code or gender, hopefully. The next is ordinal data, which is like nominal in that there's no measurable difference between data, only ordinal can be ranked, such as A, C, D, B, F grades. Next we have interval data, which has measurable differences between data, but there's no true zero, like SAT scores. Last is ratio data, which is the same as interval except two sets of the same variable can be used to create a ratio, and there is a true zero, such as time, which we are out of. So until another vaguely outlined assignment, there will be no more of this. Happy days to all. And may the stats be with you. They didn't just cut to these guys. Really